Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Boomer Barbecue. It's been a couple of months. Uh, last time I did a video was back at the uh, end of May during Memorial Day weekend. I've had a little bit of trauma in my life, uh, so I didn't really feel like making videos. You know, stuff happens, but I got something new to try today. I found some beef cheeks at Walmart, believe it or not. Yep, shopping at Walmart, looking for something extra to... Uh, barbecue because they have some interesting cuts over there so I also picked up some some lamb breast and I was looking around and found beef cheeks of all things I've been dying to try them so this will be my first time and I had to record this so you all could see it all right so without further ado let's get started can see that the smoker is now up to temp. It's running at about 216. I had it high for a bit because I needed to clean off the grates and uh, I have some grease left over. I did a clean up of, you know, gunk and grease in the bottom. I left a little at the bottom, hopefully to cook in there to, you know, make a surface, keep the surface covered so it doesn't rust. But as you can see, there really is no rust on this. I keep it covered well, but I also uh, you know, give it a little oil treatment from time to time when I'm cooking. So it's in really good shape. This is my third season with it. I can't be more happy with this grill. And I keep calling it a grill. Don't know why. My uh, <laughs> my smoker. Okay, so let's go take a look at the meat and what we're putting in today. Alrighty, guys. Here's what I have for today. Here's the beef cheeks. Everything is all seasoned, as you can see. I got a good large size one, and this one's a bit smaller. Uh, so we're going to smoke that as much as we can, probably foil wrap it towards the end, and then uh, overnight I'm going to sous vide it in tallow. Here is the lamb, the lamb breast. It's basically like spare ribs of the lamb. I got two racks of that. This one is back here is a little, has a lot of fat on it. I think I got ripped off on that one, but we'll see how it comes out. And, of course, two racks of baby backs from Aldi, all seasoned up. Did very little on the trim, didn't have to. Um, removed the membranes from everything. I don't like to use the membranes, so that's my thing. So I'm going to put them on the smoker and show you the setup, how I'm going to have it. All and right, we'll go from here. here's our setup. We got the two baby backs on the left. The uh, lamb ribs or breast is in the center, and then the two beef cheeks up front. I wanted them to be closer to the fire. Don't know why. Don't ask me. I'm just trying. It's experimental. This is my first time. So uh, so let's close her up. Get the cook started. She's in. Set. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a water pan in and then I'm going to take the trimmings from the beef cheeks and then I'm going to put it on top or maybe on the, we'll see how it works out uh, because I want to render that so I can have some tallow later for the beef cheeks. Alrighty. He's going to cook for a couple hours for opening up, so we'll see you then. All right, guys, here's a little side note. Something I forgot to mention before. I was trying to experiment uh, with wood, wet wood, during my um, cooking process because I uh, did this cook where I, I had this phenomenal smoke flavor and the wood was like drenched from the rain uh, for a couple of days. So I really had no choice. I had to use it. And because of the, the moisture content, it really, you know, smoked pretty heavy. And when the food was done, it had this most remarkable smoke flavor I've ever had. It was very strong, but it was, you know, it had a great flavor. Uh, I, like I said, I can't tell you what wood it is. It comes in a bag. It's just firewood. So eventually I'm like, I'm going to get myself a bunch of uh, oak, but it's all kiln dried stuff. So, uh, so I tried to reproduce it. And unfortunately I cut the wood too small for the first attempt and I didn't quite get the results because the water, you know, came out of it so quickly because the pieces were so small. So I said, Hmm, I said that was a mistake because it wasn't the same size wood as the first experiment. And anybody that knows anything about experiments, 
because you have to try to you know duplicate it. Another thing is the next cook, I left it at the regular size, the size that you see here on top of my smoker uh, on the shelf here. So I did that, and then I soaked them uh, for about four days in a bucket of water. So um, I tried that. I got myself a really good system for doing it. So, I mean, it does make the wood smoke more. So I was getting some really heavy smoke. And I developed a system where I started burning one piece of wood and then halfway through I moved it over. And then I put a piece of wet one right next to it. So the wet one would start burning slowly and smoldering and causing a lot of smoke while the other one to the right gave it the heat. And then eventually the, you know, the water would work its way out of the second piece. The first piece would become charcoal. I'd drop it down, move the, the left piece over to the right, and then drop another piece of wet in there. So that was working really well, and I did get some heavy smoke flavor, but it just wasn't the same flavor. So um, that wood I used on the other other uh, cook, the very first one, the, the wood had been seasoning all winter long. And I just leave it out in the elements. Um, I'll just quickly, that's my little bird. I put my wood over there. So it was just sitting there and in the elements. So... That could be part of it because um, it was well seasoned. It, it was, you know, it gotten, you know, it gets that dark color from being seasoned so long. So that was definitely going on with the wood. So I have, I have a feeling that has a lot to do maybe with some of the flavor that I had. So it's, it's almost impossible to duplicate it. But the, the system I got really works. So, I mean, I was, I thought I was on to something with the wet wood and, you know, so I tried, and uh, I, I can get some heavier smoke because it, it's really hard because this uh, firebox is not huge. So I don't have a whole lot of room to get a lot of flame, like in a bigger box where, you know, you have a lot of open air and the flames can just go up. If the flames start hitting the top of the roof here, they just started to get in sooty, and, you know, it's really bad. So I, I can only use, you know, wood like this. This is split once and then cut in half so to control the temperature. I try closing it down to get more smoke. The temperature just gets way too low and, you know. So that method really worked for me. So, uh, you know, I mean, I would definitely try it again. Uh, you know, alternating the wood pieces, moving them over, let one become ash, move the other one over, drop another wet piece in. It does create a lot of smoke, I have to say. Um, and I would definitely try it again. But I, I want to try it with um, a common wood. I want to try it with, you know, I want to buy some oak. And I want to try it with that because, like I said, I don't know what any of this wood is. I, I really can't tell the difference between wood. I probably should learn how to do that as well. But but I wanted to also show you this wood has been sitting out also in the weather. And I have my little, um, this is my moisture probe. I wanted to show you that even though this is kiln dried, and I forgot, I was going to, I was going to Google what the, the moisture content should be for a regular season wood. Uh, if any of you guys know that, if you want to put it in the comments, that would greatly help. But uh, as you can see, it's on. It's showing zero. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to add a focus here. Let's see if I can get this in focus. I'm going to stick it in there. All right, that's showing eight, seven, eight, or nine percent. Try the other side. I can't see it. I'm trying to look at it through the camera and I can't see it. <laughs> All right, let me just take a look. That's All right, that's seven or six percent. We're going from the top. Six percent. So, okay, let's test another one. All right, we're getting we're getting nothing on that one, really. Now oh, there we go. Six percent. Move it aside. Nothing there. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep it in the camera. That looks like that's 13% on one side. Nothing in the middle, but 13 on the other. So. This one is about 15% on that side. And that's 11 so you can see 
that you know the the elements of the of the weather and then uh depending on the humidity because it does tend to get rather humidity hum, bleh, it tends to get rather humid where i'm at and uh, so the wood being dried it'll soak in the moisture from the, from the atmosphere and it'll try to you know equalize to it so so between the rain and that you see i got six seven eight percent i got 15 percent on that one so just so you know that you know if you leave your kiln dry, uh, kiln dried wood out in the elements that it will pick up some moisture so um in between the break i'm gonna google to find out what percentage uh decent seasoned wood should be at all right so that concludes that section um if you have any comments any questions for me about my method of you know with the wet wood be more than happy to answer them leave them in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as i see them all right guys so on with the cook be back when the two hours is up check on uh see how the meat is doing all right See so you guys, we're about an hour and a half into the cook and I just wanted to show you this. I'm keeping it, as you can see through the digital thermometer, which is right around the back end near the stack. Uh, it's running at 223 right now. So I've got it to the point, you know, it's, it's I'm just feeding a little bit of air. So I'm trying to keep two pieces of wood in at a time and I'm feeding a little because I want that smoke right there i think you can see it's it's on the dirty side that's what i'm looking for so everybody told me i should try this and it seems to be working so so two pieces of wood and then almost shut down seems to do the trick so i'm keeping it at you know around 225 and i'm getting really really good smoke i just went 226 right there so just thought i would uh show you that all right and back to cook all right guys i had a change in plans decided to go instead of opening it two hours i went to three hours so it's about 2 31 right now started at about 11 31 um so you can see it's dialed in well it was dialed in that's dropping to 223 it's been up and down but i'm still keeping it in the range where i want it to be and i'm still getting a goodly amount of smoke so let's open her up see what's going on inside here we go Oof, look at the color oh my goodness my oh my i have to i gotta pull this out hold on a second let me get my specialized tool here that comes with this particular unit Look at that. Holy cow. Phenomenal color. Um, I'm sorry, here's the, the beef cheek. It's kind of was flat, and now it's, uh, I'm going to flip them around. Oh my goodness. Look at the crust on that. I'm definitely going to have to get my uh, temperature probe and see where they're at. I might have to wrap those and these are doing great here's the ribs look at the color i've been doing some serious smoke on this as you can tell it's all juicy and bubbly down here these are looking really nice that fat is starting to need some more time but i need to go get my probe probe those uh those uh, cheeks there i'm getting a bit of uh fat in there rendered too so i might be able to wrap it with some um let me put these back in i gotta go get my probe and then i'll let you know what happened in a little bit all right, guys, just a quickie recap of what I just did. I pulled out the temperature probe. The cheeks are up to 170 already, so um, I wrapped them both the same foil container. I put some of the tallow that I had uh, rendered off the, the trimmings from the, from the beef cheeks, so there was a good amount in there. <clears throat> and I also wrapped the veal ribs because they were up to, like, 173 as well. So they're wrapped... 
the the baby backs are like 153 so i'm gonna give them another hour and then we'll wrap those and, and then we'll just you know wait till they get up to temp pull them rest them and, and go from there all right but the uh the beef cheeks will not be done till tomorrow because i plan to do an overnight cook or rest in the, in the sous vide at 170 and hopefully that'll you know make them super duper tender like like chud did on his so all right, so that's what we're up to now. I'll get back to you in another hour. All right, see you in a bit. All right, guys, it's 345. So that's about another hour since I wrapped and closed it down again. We're going to check the temp on the baby backs. And then maybe we'll even temp the other things as well. Let's open her up. Look at all that smoke. Holy cow. Okay. My temperature gauge on the side here. Got my handy dandy tool. Look at the color on those puppies. Oh my god, they're starting to. Oh, did you see that? The fat just squirted right out. I don't know if I caught that on cam, but holy cow. It just squirted right out. All right, let me tempt these. Too many crickets. They're still only reading it. That's crazy. It was like that says one. I don't know. That's really weird. That's crazy. Um, I got. I don't know if I should just pop. I think I'm gonna put the cheeks on top. You know what? Give me more. Sorry about that. This dumb camera just cut out my feed. I'm gonna take the cheeks. I'm gonna put them on top. They're gonna run a little higher up here. I should temp them. And um, let's see, what am I? Gosh, this is annoying. Okay, hold on. Uh, I don't know how much more fat I'm going to get out of that. I should probably just pull those out of there. I think I put most of them in cheeks. And uh, give me some room for these, for these lamb ribs. So pull that out of there. Over a bit, I'll put these up top here because I really think they're impeding heat of these uh, ribs here. So I mean, it's it's been another hour and the and the heat was really running high. I think I'm gonna let them run some more, uh, but I'll tempt the other things and see what's going on with those. Put a little juice on here. I can't find a decent spray bottle that won't break every time I try to use it, so I figured the bottle's a better idea. All right, guys, I will be back in another hour. Hey, guys, spend another hour. We are going to temp the baby backs, check them out. Uh, whatever temp they are, they're going to get wrapped because I'm getting tired. <laughs> I don't have the patience I used to have. Also, on another note, um, I don't know if I mentioned before, but uh, the cheeks were temping like butter. I mean, uh, probing like butter. <clears throat> but I tried a little piece of them, and they're still not quite that tender, so they're still going to go for the overnight sous vide. See how they come out in the morning and uh, like that. So let's check on these baby bags. They look dark. They're dark as heck. Where's my tool? Hmm. Oh, there it is. I didn't want both of these things. 
as you can see I need a new camera holder because this one is shut it won't won't stay where I put it anymore worked well while I had it she's on the way out so I'm gonna have to think of something else you're looking mighty dark I can hear him sizzling yeah that's almost 170 there yeah I'm sorry let me uh, yeah they're ready to wrap all right let's check the temp on the these right quick looking mighty tasty oh my goodness they are butter look at that just right in and out temping at 202 208 those babies are done those are going to come out get a rest and then we're going to wrap the other ones give them some time to cook all right i'm going to do that off cam i uh, will get back to you when we are finished with the ribs and everything and I'm back inside I'll let stuff rest and then I'll give you a final on what's been going on see you in a bit all right guys there she is I gotta tell you I was gonna sous vide this puppy and my brother doesn't like sous vide says he doesn't like the texture of sous vide so I let him try the small one so I cut it up thinking it was still going to be chewy, and it was freaking amazing. Oh, my God. Because they both got up to about 207, 208 degrees. They were sitting in um, tallow inside the foil. So I'm going to cut into this puppy right now since uh, this is, you know, the first one. I want you guys to see it because it came out amazing. Um, the other things I cooked, the, the, the lamb ribs and the... Uh, baby backs. I'm going to show you those at the end of the video in picture form. I took some very nice pictures because I'm really tired and I just want to get this video done. But this uh, is a work of art. and Let me cut into it and show you how it looks. You see it's just cutting like butter. Look at that. Look at how juicy. Look at the gooeyness collagen really rendered wonderfully it's nice and bouncy it's, kind of here. it's hard to cut this thing when I'm watching it through the video I like to cut them a bit thinner but make a nice sandwich too if I cut it thin enough Get a close look at that. A lot of fat in that one, but that's fine. One of these other pieces is one. Look how she pulls apart. Nice and tender. You see how sticky and gooey it is. It's and look at the uh, the smoke rings. And I got to tell you, my brother is a big smokehead. If I don't have enough smoke, he's gonna tell me. And I got a one rating for smoke on this, so. I did it with uh, shutting down my damper, keeping the heat low and let the smoke pour on. And I'll tell you what, you saw the color of most of the meat. And uh, you can see the how black this was, the, the bark on it. It's amazing. I'm just going to try a piece right now. It just looks, oh my God. Look at that sticky, gooey. Oh my God freaking amazing well apparently I nailed this on the first go thought I was gonna have to sous vide it overnight but it's amazing it's freaking delicious it's um it's just as tender as, as uh, brisket but it has a whole whole different flavor oh my god I don't want to eat all my shot I've already had a little bit of the other ones I don't want to be too full. Well, 
Hope you guys enjoyed, hey, guys enjoyed that. Um, thanks for stopping in and watching. Hopefully you watched till the end. And uh, hopefully I'll start to make more videos because I'm feeling a little bit better. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. And hit that bell to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos. And anything will help grow my channel so it would be much appreciated. So this is the end and as every ending I always say keep on smoking guys. See you.